Okay, time is up. Let us see your answers. It's a square root of 85 units. Did you get it? Let's proceed to question number 2. If x plus 3y equals 11 and 2x plus 3y equals 13, what is the value of y? Again, if x plus 3y equals 11 and 2x plus 3y equals 13, what is the value of y? 30 seconds, go! Time is up. Let us see your answer. The answer is y equals 3. Okay, let us proceed to question number 3. Ready? For what values of x is 4x squared minus 9 all over x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 4 meaningless? Again, for what value our values of x is 4x squared minus 9 all over x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 4 meaningless. 30 seconds, go! Time is up. Let us see your answers. The answers is the set with elements positive negative 2 and positive negative 1. So there are four values for which uh, the expression is meaningless. Let us go to question number 4. Ready? Solve for x in the equation 9 raised to x equals 27 raised to 3 minus x. Again, solve for x in the equation 9 raised to x equals 27 raised to 3 minus x. In 30 seconds, go. Okay, time is up. What is your answer? The answer, x equals 9 over 5. Last question for this round. Question number 5. Evaluate the expression square root of 72 plus square root of 72 plus square root of 72 plus and so on. Again, evaluate the expression square root of 72 plus square root of 72 plus square root of 72 plus and so on 30 seconds go Time is up. Let us see your answers. The answer is 9. Okay, did you get all 5? Now let us show the solution to the 5 items in this average round. Solutions to our 30 second questions. For question number 1, we are given a rectangle ABCD containing point P in its interior 
that is 10 units from A, 11 units from B, and 8 units from D. The question, how far is P from C? If we draw the diagram for this problem, we'll have rectangle ABCD with P in its interior. So let us show the given measures. 10 units from A, so AP is 10. 11 units from B, so BP is 11. And 8 units from D, so DP is 8. Now, since we are asked how far is P from C, then we are solving for the length of the segment CP. If you are familiar, if you look at our diagram, it resembles a British flag because if we draw a segment through P that is parallel to AB and another segment through P that is parallel to AD, then we will have four small rectangles with their di diagonals drawn. This is how we're going to solve the length for CP. Or if you are familiar with the British flag theorem, you can form the equation from this problem as AP squared. That's the diagonal of the rectangle formed by drawing the segment through P parallel to AB and AD. So we have AP squared plus CP squared equals BP squared plus DP squared. This is the British flag theorem as other books call it. Substituting the values, AP is 10, BP is 11, and DP is 8. So we have 10 squared plus CP squared equals 11 squared plus 8 squared. Evaluating each expression, so we have 100 plus CP squared equals 121 plus 64. So the equation for CP squared is 185 minus 100. And then we'll have CP squared equals 85. And then the square, is getting the square root of both sides. Therefore, CP is equal to the square root of 85. Okay, let's proceed to the next question. We're solving for the value of y in the two linear equations, x plus 3y equals 11, and 2x plus 3y equals 13. So we have a system of linear equation, and we solve this using the substitution method. From the first equation, we can form x equals 11 minus 3y, subtracting 3y to both sides of the equation. And this expression for x, we're going to substitute to the x in the second equation that will give us 2 times the quantity 11 minus 3y plus 3y equals 13. By distributive property, we'll get 2 times 11, 22 minus 6y plus 3y equals 13. Combining similar terms, negative 6y plus 3y, we have negative 3y and 13 minus 22 that is subtracting 22 to both sides, we have negative 3y equals negative 9, then y equals 3. Okay, let's proceed. You can also use other methods in solving systems of linear equation. Just, in the, just that in this question, the substitution method is an easier method to use. Let us proceed to question number 3. We are asked for the values of x for which 4x squared minus 9 all over x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 4 meaningless. For this expression to be meaningless, the denominator should be equal to 0. So we equate the denominator x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0 then solve for the roots of this equation. By factoring, it can be factored as x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 1, which can be further factored as difference of two squares, x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. Then equating each factor to 0 by the zero property of multiplication, we'll get x equals 2 
negative 2, 1, and negative 1. Let us proceed to solution to question number 4. Solve for x in the equation 9 raised to x equals 27 raised to 3 minus x. Both sides of the equation can be expressed as an exponential expression with base 3. So 9 is 3 squared and 27 is 3 cubed. Therefore, we have 3 raised to 2x equals 3 raised to 3 times 3 minus x, that is 9 minus 3x. So for these two expressions to be equal, the powers or the exponents must be equal. That is, 2x equals 9 minus 3x. Then solve for x, we get 5x equals 9, divide both sides by 5. So x equals 9 over 5. Last question, question number 5. We solve for the value of this expression, square root of 72 plus the square root of 72 plus the square root of 72 and so on. So in algebra, if we are going to approach this problem, we let a variable to be equal to this. That is, let x be equal to the expression. So now that we have an equation, x equals the square root of 72 plus the square root of 72 and so on. So by squaring both sides, we will get x squared equals 72 plus the square root of 72 plus the square root of 72 plus and so on. We notice that we have the same expression in the last term as in our start. We let that be equal to x, then we have x squared equals 72 plus x. This is a quadratic equation. So we put all the terms to the left and leave 0 to the right of the equation. That is x squared minus x minus 72. Factor the left side, that is x minus 9 times x plus 8 equals 0. Again, equating each factor to 0, we have x minus 9 equals 0 and x plus 8 equals 0. From here, we get the values of x as x equals 9 and x equals negative 8. We go back to our original expression, which is the square root of a value. So the square root of a value cannot be a negative as we do not have a number whose square root is a negative value. So we only get the positive value that is 9. X equals 9. Okay, that is all. Thank you.